Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. What a heck of a day you've had. <laughs> you were on the journey with me the whole time. $10.7 million plus and counting, yes. for the American Arts signature auction that took place on May 7th. That's right. So we'll get to a couple of the highlights in just a moment as they are displayed behind us. But I would like for you to tell me what this means, because this is our first American art auction to transcend the $10 million mark. Listen, I mean, I've been selling American art since 2002. I've waited a long time to sell a line decker for seven figures. As you know, I told you from the day I met you, I will one day sell a seven figure Rockwell. I believe you've been saying it for more than a decade. I've been saying it for more than a decade. And I remember the first line decker I sold for a lot of money. The estimate was 12 to 18,000 and it <laughs> sold for something like 250,000. And I thought that was it. I thought that was the be all and end all. But it just shows you got to keep trying harder. So we always, when we put together our catalogs, we try to create sort of a cadence, like a roller coaster. Right. So you know going into it, especially you should know after selling American art for so long, which lots will be the stars. You just know. I knew the line decker would be a star. I didn't know it would sell for $4.1 million, but I knew it would be a star. And therefore we decided to put the line decker first and sell the Rockwell right after that. So it sort of carried the momentum of it. And it worked out very well. Got a great price for a Judge Magazine cover. It might even be the, it is the top price for a Judge Magazine cover sold at auction. So let's talk about the excitement in the room, that moment when you realize that the Lion Decker was crossing the million dollar mark. One million dollars. The two million dollar mark. Two million dollars. The three million dollar mark. Three million dollars. What was that like? Because I certainly got to watch you on the video. You were, um, the whole room was consumed by this uh, really momentous occasion. Right. Well, it, when you're in the moment, your adrenaline is pumping. And I happen to be sitting next to my colleagues, Ed, Ariana, Todd, Megan, and me. We're the team. We work very well as a team together. We like to sit together at the auction. We like to work off of each other's energy. And I knew that all of us had the bidders on the phone for this lot. I had a feeling it would set a new auction record, which was about 500 and change. Mm -hmm. I did not, I was hoping, I, I'm always hoping that it would sell for seven figures. It got to the million really quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. And then it dropped down to about three phones. And then it came down to just my phone and Ariana's phone. And I know these two clients and, um, and we wanted to give them a lot of time you give them a lot of time. I don't know how many minutes this lot took. It might have been 10 minutes. It was a while. It was it was longer than we usually do. It's longer than I've sold. You know, I've been at auctions with $100 million paintings that have sold for less time than this one. <laughs> but with something like this, when you're going to set such a huge new benchmark for an artist, you really want to give your clients enough time. These are clients that we all have relationships with. These are clients that we've all that we're friends with, that we trust and they trust us. And we wanted to guide them and and it was a conversation. If you look at the tape, all of us are in very serious, intimate, intense conversations with our clients. And we're trying to make these game time decisions on, on whether they're making the right decision for them or not. So when we got down to it, the last few bidders, we knew that they were all going to fight it out because this is sort of a holy grail moment. I keep using that term holy grail, but it really was sort of a holy grail moment for Linebacker. Sold! Well, look, certainly this is Lion Decker's moment. There's a documentary about Lion Decker about to come out. But why do you think it's this particular piece that transcended any sense of what Lion Deckers could do at auction? To sell for more than $4 million was something obviously for which you were not prepared. Um, certainly you were, in as much as that you had predicted it for many years. But why this one? It's, I'm, I'm happy that you asked me that question so I could look at it again. I'm a little awestruck by that. I'm a little bit in love with this painting. I'm a little sad. Actually, after the auction ended, I went over just to have a moment with this painting because I've said this to you before, I get very emotionally connected to every object in my sale and I get very emotionally connected to our consigners and our bidders. And I knew this painting would resonate with our top clients because yes, we've all seen his children before. You know, he was known for the New Year's baby. That's his most popular character. Mm -hmm. 
but there's something very special about this specific work in that, and we've said this before, Leindecker is the master of restraints and what he decides to put into his compositions. Whereas Rockwell, it's sort of fun to see these together, it's sort of a case study, because very rarely will you see Rockwell just do one portrait of a person just sort of sitting like that. I, I can't think of one where I have seen a Rockwell like that, except just for Rose himself. and the Riveter, or, except or for Rose just, and the Riveter yeah, and himself. himself. But this one in particular, the way he's engaging the viewer and looking right at you, and he's adorable. He's a perfect little child. He's a cherubic, beautiful little child with his little lips and his dirty little fingers and his little <laughs> knuckles and his socks falling down. And football, it's the American pastime, it's football. And I, listen, I would be lying to you if I said I knew this painting would sell for $4 million. But that's the beauty of the auction process. But I knew that it, I knew that it would set a record. In my heart of hearts, I knew it would set a record for that reason. But on top of all of that, it's, and we've discussed this as well, it's in remarkably good condition. Well, it hadn't been auctioned ever. It's, it's never been, been the auctioned. Same family for 100 years. For 100 years. And I would take it off the wall, but I, I will not touch it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but if I were to, and we have looked at the back together, it's got the, it's unlined, it's got the original stretcher, it, it's never been touched. You know, it's got, you know, maybe some minor little spots of ink paint, which again is rare for, for illustration because remember, the illustration was done for a commercial purpose. Once the magazine or the publishing house was done with it, they threw it away, they put it in the basement, they gifted it. So what's interesting is that the painting directly behind this, this Leroy Neiman, was for a long time leading the auction yes. uh, in terms of the bidding as, uh, right. as we led into the auction. Speaking of the master of restraint, the lion decker, Neiman is a bit of the opposite of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. But obviously this did incredibly well as well. Yes. Um, it, it, to me, it's a fascinating piece. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I assume that uh, the buyer uh, was gonna hang it probably in a, uh, either in a den or a game room or a, a, a man cave A man cave, kind. yes. This is a great painting for a man cave. Well, what do you like about it? It's swinging. It's swinging, <laughs> exactly. That's what everyone loves about Neiman. <laughs> he's Mr. Playboy, right? He's right. Mr. Polo, he's Mr. Casino. I mean, when you look at this, you think of the Rat Pack and you think of- It does look like Ocean's Eleven. Totally looks like Ocean's Eleven, but that's what people love about Neiman. And we've started to see his star rise about 10 years ago. And there's a tremendous crossover with Neiman's as sports collectors. Obviously. Obviously. You said to me, this is kind of like 2008 all over again. What does that mean? Prices that we saw in 2007 and early 2008 were bananas. And that was the time that uh, Thomas Moran sold for over $17 million. That was a time when we were seeing, that was actually the highest sell-through rate I've ever had in my career. I had a 95% sell-through rate in 2007. This sale had a 98% sell-through rate. <laughs> that was the part that blew me away because there's always a few lots that don't find a buyer at the auction and that's normal. Right. I was shocked, I was shocked. I mean, after the auction, someone said to me, well, what do, which works do you think will sell after the sale? I said, there are not that many left to sell. It was extraordinary. It took us five hours to sell the sale because we had so many bidders. I'm curious how many, I think we had something like- oh, Over a thousand. Over a thousand bidders in the sale for 188 lots. I've never seen that many bidders in one American art sale. So what kind of pressure does this put on you for the next one? Well, you're only as good as your last sale, right? But right. I've already got a few good things in the pipeline. I'm not going to tell you what they are. Fair enough, fun. you should keep them secret. That's it, we'll keep them secret. <laughs> well, thanks for doing this. Thank you for having me.